and being able to read that social awareness so that we can be better communicators. Absolutely. Um, what are some other things that you find is necessary to be mindful of when uh, it, in regards to communicating? I mean, communication in a whole is a very broad uh, topic to speak on, right? Um, and again, the, 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 the space we're coming from is more you identifying your technique and your style, because for me, I find it that communication is definitely a two-way street, right? It's a give and take. Um, reason for me and for the team, positive mindset, having that whole self-reflection and knowing that self-assessment and co um, transferring that over into the workplace. Um, but what are some other components of um, communication you'd say besides adaptability or the team would, would make note of? Okay, so apart from identifying what our communication style is, it's about improving it so that we can be more assertive. I believe Tremet is going to touch on communication, sure. personalities, and styles. So when he touches on that, he's going to stress that we all aim to be assertive communicators, which is key. And a big part of it also is reading our nonverbal or our our, our social awareness, right, or body language. It has a lot to do in face-to-face -face communication. And then, Marcelli, I believe you cover barriers, all right? And yes, when it, exactly. Yes, and barriers. When it comes, <laughs> Lots of those. <laughs> when it comes to communication barriers, it, it's reading beyond what is said. It's reading in between the lines. It's reading the message between the message. And when we're talking about communication, it is what you read in between what people people are trying to say. And of course, we, we know when, when we get into it that communication is effective once you receive the feedback that you were hoping for. All right. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Um, so thank you so much for recapping us with the series that you guys have seen uh, that were on Facebook. And please note that next week we will be boosting another video. And this will be talking a little bit more about personal management and giving you some tricks and tips on how to improve and also how to assess yourselves. Right. Um, I believe it's strongly important, especially for a lot of uh, people from working from home right now. Um, the reason we called it digital communication, uh, just as a disclaimer, I don't want you guys to have the impression. I'm pretty sure a lot of persons were uh, having the the mindset that oh, it's teaching us how to communicate digitally during the you know off of a computer. Well, guess what, my loves, communication is communication. You just have to let it start from the core, which is you, right. Um, so with that said, uh, we want to take this opportunity, or I would like to just share with everyone that is viewing right now, um, please feel free to leave a comment or a question you may have based on the information we're sharing in the comment box, and we'll definitely be sure to touch on those so you can have a, a, clar a clarity, sorry, while we're in the midst of um, discussing, okay? So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about communication 101 and some of the core um topics that falls under that all right so let's get the technicalities out of the way um let's first start off by defining communication so by definition it is the exchange of information essentially it's sending and receiving information and we can all agree that communication is a vital aspect in our in our daily lives every single thing we do is communication wait 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 i have a question i have a question i'm sorry lead so the way you mean, <laughs> so you mean speaking proper english does not qualify me for being a good communicator is that what you're saying no all right <laughs> communication everything is communication and i find in our culture we know how to communicate without saying a word all right so it, it, it's the simple body language, it is verbal, it is what you write. So every single thing we do is communication. And it is very important because when we talk about verbal communication, which is speaking to each other, believe it or not, 30% of verbal communication is just speaking. That's it's so. just finding the words and seeing it. Can you guess what 45% of that process is? I'll give you a dollar. Oh, you got money now. You know what? That. Forty-five percent of verbal, uh, the verbal communication process is listening. 
And I believe the need touches on active, active listening, listening, which is the type of listening, listening. that we want to right. practice. Okay, there's a difference mm. between listening with the intent to answer and listening actively. So actively is the one we want to try and implement. Well, okay. Sir? Exactly, Trina. Exactly. You, will, you will learn a lot from Denise's presentation. <laughs> okay. Now, it is very important to understand, I mean, communication is not just talking, but effective communication leads to productive relationships, whether it's personal, whether it's professional, okay? And effective communication basically implies that the message you sent was received properly. It means whoever you're talking to is not confused. That is how you know when you have communicated properly. They can do whatever it is you ask. You're not confused. The message was clear. Now, we communicate during various through various means, whether it's spoken words, which is normally face-to-face -face or over the telephone. We communicate through written messages, whether it's through emails. People still write letters? Yes. Uh, On notes and cards and stuff. Not love notes. All right. <laughs> <It's> communication. <laughs> okay. Roses well, we are ready. <laughs> we send text messages. We send text messages. We send okay. text yeah. messages. Exactly. We yeah. send text messages. That is written word. Any any form of messages, social media, emails, letters, you name it, it's written written word. And most importantly, we communicate through body language, which we will get more into. Okay. Yeah. Now. It is the foundation, of course, on which we build understanding, on which we build trust, mm -hmm. and on which we build respect. Okay, so there has to be communication so that we can build all of those. Okay, and these are very important. I believe when we do our presentation, we normally use this quote that says, it is like oxygen to life. Communication Absolutely. to a relationship is like oxygen to life without it, it dies. Okay, so that's just the technicalities. Okay? Clear. Clear. Roger that. <laughs> All right. Now, the communication process, like I said, when it comes to verbal, it is the words we say. It is the voice. Most importantly, it's the voice we use when we convey the message because sugar brings more flies than vinegar. Okay, so it is the words <laughs> we use. It is never what you say. It is how you say it. You say it, absolutely. Okay. And so we need to be very cognizant of that when we're communicating. And most of the message gets lost and miscommunication occurs because the tone in which we say something is not necessarily the tone that we should use. Mm -hmm. Lastly, communication can be visual, which I said is our body language or its images shown. Okay. For example, I'm sure everybody has social media, right? If you receive a message that is funny, many people write LOL and send it off. Half the time, I'm not laughing. But <laughs> if I send an emoji or a GIF or something like that, where, whereby it, it's of something laughing, it's of a happy face, then you interpret that whatever you told me was funny. Okay? So that that is images that helps to cement your message that you are sending, okay? Now, there's several different components to the communication process, and every single interaction that you have includes all of these. It is, and I'll break this down more in depth, it is the sender, the message, the channel, and the receiver. Okay? Oh, the feedback. <laughs> all right, yes, the feedback. All right. So now to break this down more in depth, the sender is whoever initiates the conversation. So in keeping with the communication process, right now, I am your sender. I am talking to you. I'm initiating conversation. Okay. After the sender, the message is either the words I'm seeing, it is pictures that I'm sending, it is the body language that I'm using. That is the message. It's whatever I am saying to you. The channel then is whatever means I use to send my message. Whether I'm talking to you via face-to-face, -face, I'm talking to you through this app, it's 
me sending a message that is the channel it is whatever way i choose to send my my communication uh to you okay my receiver would be all of you my receiver is whoever i'm talking to okay now once i send a message and i send it to my receiver or i send it to you your feedback to me lets me know if you receive the message properly okay sure. so it is essential when you're speaking to somebody or when you're sending a message to somebody it is essential for you to wait for feedback to ensure that your message was clearly delivered we're good so far uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, I know, you have I, a question. <laughs> yes, I don't understand what you just said. <laughs> no, we, we, just, just in, just in relation to what you're saying, it's true. We, when we do communicate, um, sometimes uh, this has happened to most of us, if not all of us, where we say, "Yeah, yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, yeah," and you don't understand anything. <laughs> yeah, man, I got it. I do it all the time. So. <laughs> In in and, case uh, in case of those, you have to be mindful of yourself and 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 um. As and you, it doesn't matter. Like, Miscommunication, yeah. like you said, Tremet, will occur through yeah. any means. For example, um, in using <laughs> this Zoom this Zoom app, if you're having poor internet connection, mm. that is a chance for miscommunication to happen because you're going to miss a part of my message. And in the workplace, for the sake of mentioning statistics, about 70% of mistakes in the workplace has to do with poor communication. Okay? So that's just 70%. Now, because everything we do is communication, oftentimes the way we start a message projects the outcome of the message. Meaning, just the tone of voice, just your approach, your body language when you're coming to somebody may determine how they interpret the message. If I come to you in a frazzled way, I'm out of breath, I'm annoyed, chances are you won't receive the message properly. And even if you don't understand what I'm saying, if I look like I'm annoyed and I look frustrated, chances are you won't ask me to repeat it again because um, you might be on the receiving end of, of something not so pretty. Okay. Now, when it comes to personal communication, which is one-on-one -on -one communication, out of everything that I'm seeing, only 7% of it would be just the words. 38% of it is my tone of voice that I'm using. And what would be my 55%? Anybody want to guess? Hmm. 55%. Could that be based on body language? You know what, Marcella, you probably have heard me. No, you have to give this girl a dollar now. 55% of communication <laughs> is based on body language. Okay? It is, it is your body language. All right? So that's majority percent of the whole communication process. It is how you look while you are talking. And the reason why body language is so important when you are speaking is because on an intuitive level, it allows you to connect with somebody. And the more developed your social skills are, the more you are aware of how people um, carry themselves, the more easily it is to read body language. Mm -hmm. um, a typical example would be if you're standing talking to somebody and their body is completely turned in an opposite direction as if they're facing ready to walk off, chances are they're not interested in the conversation. So if you keep talking and you're not interested, that is a chance for miscommunication to occur because clearly they're not interested in reading into your message. And I think that's a really good point that you mentioned, you know, um, body language does definitely play a big part in the entire communication package. Um, I have a friend of mine that refuses to talk to me if I don't have that eye contact, eye contact. Yeah. At her when we're talking mm -hmm. and I get a little bit, a little bit annoyed because I'm like, listen, I'm hearing you. I'm listening. And she's like, that's just it. Are you hearing or are you listening? And I listen so with my eye. That's that's right. Right. That's right. We need everything engaged <laughs> when we're communicating because remember now, communic the the process of getting your message across clearly is the feedback that you receive from somebody. 
Yeah. And so it's going to be very obvious if somebody has gotten your message or not based on just their response. But I have a challenge, a question, a challenge, if you, if you want to call it. What happens if, I mean, the dynamics are changing. We're working from home now off of computers. Uh-huh. I have the luxury of taking off my camera and not be seen. So do you think body language still affects the way I communicate not being able to be seen? When it comes with not being able to be seen, that is when your paralinguistics come in. That is when your tone of voice, your pitch, that is when all of that comes in because all the sugar. Yeah, all the all the sugar, sugar not the vinegar. All right. That's when your your voice, your pitch, your tone, everything comes into play. And that is what is going to cement the message that you're sending across. Because it, it is it is how you, how you say it. I have an activity that I love to use whenever we're doing communication. And if any of our participants have logged on, I'm sure they'll be very familiar. It is one, <laughs> it is one sentence. And whenever you stress uh, various words in the sentence, the message changes. Mm-hmm. Um, the sentence is pretty simple. The sentence is, I never said you stole the money. Okay. Now, based on whatever word I stress the meaning changes Changes. for example if i said i never said you stole the money what does that imply i never said you stole the money somebody says somebody somebody stole it but but it's not me so depending on what a word i stress and i change my tone for the message changes fully or if i said i never said you stole the money Somebody did. I said somebody did. It's not you, but somebody did. And so if we're communicating without being able to read somebody else's feature, it comes down to your voice Mm -hmm. and your tone. Tonation, yeah. Yes. And I believe, Marcelli, you talk more about paralinguistics in in your um, part of the the communication module. Absolutely. That's a good question. I mean, we're getting now where where things have become more, or will become even more... um, communications through, mm-hmm. through the internet now and therefore a lot of people don't necessarily use a lot of visual in this case um well i mean certain certain there are certain companies certain businesses that use straight conversation and no visual exactly a uh, perfect example mm-hmm. uh let's yes. say the call center agents call right, right. Um, they're not necessarily being seen but their energy and their their flow helps to interact and engage their their potential clients or, or, or who they're doing business with, right? I mean, when we, when we do sales, we say, you know, you do a, they can hear the smile in your voice even if they cannot see you. Um, exactly, so- right? And I, again, it's very important. Um, and I, I will get a little bit more in depth when I take over and I uh, do my piece of the presentation, but it's so important that you have that high energy, especially mm. with your tone and your pitch, right? Um, it, is, it, it seals the deal with your interaction why it's a make or break if you're if the person that you're talking to doesn't feel like you're interested just based off of how your the perception of how you're looking or sounding it's a make or break right mm-hmm. so again it is something that i would love for all of you to take into consideration and remember it all comes down to how you start a start. message the the tone that you start your message on whether you're you're sending an email whether you're sending a message or you're talking to somebody face to face however you start the message is how that person will start interpreting uh your message so if you have a friendly disposition over the phone mm-hmm. you w- people tend to want to listen to you Okay, as opposed to somebody who speaks in this monotone voice where there's no inflection. I don't know what you're like trying that. to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, as well, um, as you push on along in this thing, we come to the part where we are talking about what type of communication styles each individual has. Um, there are basically three communication styles. Uh, at some point in our lives, we've covered all three, I'm sure. But um, as Ms. Chantel mentored, mentioned earlier in the, in the presentation, we want to focus on being assertive. Um, but we're going to start from the first part. Now. There are three, and the first one is passive style of communication. There's aggressive, 
and then there's assertive. Um, anyone want to give me a shout out and figure out what passive, being a passive communicator would be? Is there anyone? Anyone? No, no. Not you guys. Not you guys. No fair. I don't have dollar for that. <laughs> well, if you want to continue, passive means that uh, passive communicator means that you're you're very soft. Okay. Um, you give in easily and you don't necessarily have a strong backbone when you're dealing with people, all right? You're soft-spoken, overly, yes, uh-huh, okay, yes, uh-huh, okay, no problem, uh-huh, I will do that, all right? You tend to beat around the bush and you don't necessarily get to your point that you want to say, that you need to say, all right? And mm -hmm. for much of the conversation and much of the dealings with people, you follow the crowd and you, you leave your opinions unheard. You keep it inside. You prefer not to voice them. All right. And, and this isn't necessarily the best type of communication style you'd like to have because then people take advantage of you and you don't get to, to, to be a part of things that you should be a part of because of whatever fear or whatever mm -hmm. feelings you have inside. Um, a lot of people like to say they're introverted and things like that, and, and then complain later on about how their voice has, hadn't been heard. Um, and some passive communications uh, lend to that idea, no? Uh, mm -hmm. Passive behavior. Uh, words like, I don't think I can do that. We do that all the time. Um, but you know, that's a good point isn't... that that you're making, you know, Tremaine. I was doing some research the other day in regards to, um, you know, personality differences in, mm. in the sense of um, communication. And when it comes to the passive communicator that you're touching base on, um, research has, has shown that it, it's something that is actually instilled with us from from the, the, the age of growing up, from infancy. For something, some, some reason whatsoever, you know, fear or there's the I not think being able to hear, make your voice being heard as a child. Yes, like exactly. That. How many of how many of you guys can remember growing up wise as a child, <laughs> you interject to say something and you get that <laughs> side look from your mom like no children are to be seen and not, not heard. To be heard. Right. Yes. And, and it, uh, right? Yeah. Or um we even do it now. Watch your P's and Q's. Mm -hmm. You ever yeah, heard Yeah, I think before? my dad had uh, biscuits among biscuits and crackers among crackers. Yeah. <laughs> right? Even, so... even, 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 even when, when you're as a child, you're belittled for showing your talents. You know, watch the one the puppy show itself. All of those things stifle your, your desire to want to communicate. And that's a great point you brought up about it being a psychological, uh, could possibly be a psychological um, problem. Uh, that's passed on through your ages and you just decide Absolutely. to back up and take whatever it is because this is the easier route. Um, abused people as well tend to tend to be very passive because that is the less uh, less destructive uh, thing for them in their lives. No? It's easier. Right. To, it's not as hard to get past those things. And so they always, they, they say things like, like uh, no problem, man, got you. Yes, man. You know, I do it, but <laughs> I know I, I, I see a lot of passive communication because I'm a very willing person to do things. So it doesn't matter to me if I have to do something or not, as long as you ask. Um, but a lot of people don't want to hear their voices heard, are afraid to have their voices heard, you know? And then there are the other opposite side of the spectrum where people are saying, <laughs> and scream up, and say, can you? And we've done that for far, far too often in our lives. Um, these are the aggressive communicators. You know, they have harsh tones and everything about them is aggressive. It's like the road rage drivers, you know, when you get out there and somebody fly past, you laugh, you catch them, don't no, not there for the good, right? They're demanding. They blame everything on other people. And this is part of what the wellness and, and the, the, the self-reflection the, the uh -huh, comes, comes in. in. Um, they're blocking out any path to growth by blaming everyone else, I see it at this one, finding an excuse to say, well, if they're never because of this, right? Instead of taking some ownership onto whatever situation they're in. And um, they use extremely intimidating body language. You find these people always pushing up on you, trying to use their steer downs or, or, or uh, infringing on your personal space. Right, now, I don't wanna, I don't wanna get it, you know, um, 
miscommunicated, <laughs> being that we're on communication, uh -huh. um, we're on the communication topic. So where where you're talking about have being an aggressive communicator, this is the type personality type that always walks around pretty much upset, or as I like to say, um, walking around with a chip on your shoulder, so yeah. to speak. Right? Um, aggressive communicators have a tendency of being overbearing, meaning. Um, Speaking from experience, uh, having the ability to communicate with a lot of different personality types, I found it that when you talk to an aggressive communicator, it's like their voice has to be heard above everyone else's or their mm -hmm. opinion is the one that matters more, right? Um, Some are very boastful. Um, um, like you said, you know that. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I nothing, have wrong, nothing, nothing wrong with being confident, but some, some blow the entire band, not just their horn. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. right. In, a, in attempts to belittle other people, to make other people feel smaller. All right, um, I got you. Right, and so. But um, Tremet, I, I think I, I like that you said that when because we were talking about nonverbal body language, mm -hmm. that people can be aggressive communicators without seeing anything. In it's about space. having this energy that just yeah. shuts you down, that just intimidates you. So it's it's very important, um, for people to understand that you probably could communicated with aggressive people who may not have said mm -hmm. um these 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 types of uh, messages or, or may not have have used, used these specific words but just mm -hmm. the body language itself may have been aggressive and if, uh, regardless of where it came from some again like just like a passive um could be taught from childhood yeah. as well um mm -hmm. some could be defense mechanisms against whatever trauma they might have had in their lives um however with the by using the growth mindset, you can begin to understand yourself a little bit better and search into yourself of why mm -hmm. you might be aggressive or why you might be a passive communicator and identify mm -hmm. how you can improve yourself. And that right. is what this yeah. whole process is all about, improvement, building, and growth. Um, now back to the aggressive communicator. He's a, he or she is always the one saying that, well, you know, it's your fault. There's never, well, yeah, I can see where I'm wrong. I can see I can and that and in not only in work but in your personal relationships at home the children with your children the because i guess uh, you're already getting that stifling uh atmosphere within the home right yourself, with your friend okay people you've just met and we do this all the time we do this all the time and we have to be conscious of our interaction with people, as Ms. Chantel said. And, um, we rarely ever take responsibility for our actions. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, this is one of the communications we really want to avoid because it sparks more aggression, even mm -hmm. from people who might not necessarily be aggressive. And as Ms. Chantel mentioned earlier, it's how you start the communication. No one wants to say hello to nasty answers. Nice right. Answers, right. You know, and I think um, I totally love the fact that you guys are you touch both sides of the spectrum, meaning from a passive, more withdrawn communicator. Mm -hmm. And you also identified what an aggressive communicator is. Um, again, it's it, I keep on reiterating or mentioning that it is a self assessment process That's because nice. I've come across uh, multiple people that give me kind of the disposition. I'm a friendly person. <laughs> I feel serious. I'm friendly. <laughs> I'm like, wow, great. I'm, I hesitate to answer because the words coming out is I'm friendly, but the disposition on your face is telling me, you know, want to play with me. I had a friend, but not play, you know? So again, it, I, it, it's something that I really, really, really do, do hope that everybody is taking into consideration when it comes to, to um, you know, interacting or engaging with it with persons. I can guarantee you with me, you, you work on your communication and you assess yourself and you work on your approach once you've identified where you're falling. Once you work on your approach and you try to just, you know, uh, shave off some little bad traits and um, add on some positive attributes, your communication professionally and personally will have a fluid flow in how you engage with others, right? Yeah. Um, again, it's a challenge, but it's one that will definitely benefit you in the longer run. It's and a process. Exactly. It's a process. Um, it, it won't happen overnight. Um, there are many steps that have to go into place before you can identify what you want or how you want to communicate or how you want to be communicated with. 
Absolutely. Um, so we looked at passive and assertive. Right, and we're pushing on to assertive. This is the wow. communication style that we would open to to emulate and hope other people would like to to be a um, to be a part of. No, I mean it's not necessarily a boy band group, but it's a matter of of being able to express yourself in the way that you should express yourself with respect, sincerity, with confidence. I like that, self-expression. You know? mm -hmm. your, your discussions and your talks isn't about um, about people, it's about finding solutions to problems more than putting blames. Um, you are the type of person that addresses your concerns directly. There is no beating around the bush. However, it is done in an amicable tone uh, so that it can be easily digested by people who can be understood, it can be appreciated by someone who might be sensitive to tone. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the diplomatic way of communicating. And um, so it's a tight wire balance between, between aggressive and passive. However, this is, the way, this is the idea that we want most people to get to, a point where you can express yourself civilly, you can agree to disagree, and you can do so responsibly, respectfully. All right. If you make a mistake or if there are mistakes being made by you, you're willing to say, you know what, yes, that was my mistake and I can fix it so, or I can try or I need help. Do okay. I fall under being an assertive communicator if um, my approach is, well, I'm not the type of person where I just say what I have to say? Um, I don't really hold back much because I feel like uh, if I need to say something, I just have to get it out of the way because, you know, is that what an assertive communicator is like? Not necessarily. Or I mean, you you would be generally up there borderline aggressive <laughs> for the for okay. the simple fact that that you've taken time to ex to, to be able to to see what type of person you are, right? And part of being assertive is being able to express yourself in a civil way, and for that alone, not being able to do so civilly. Mm -hmm. And being able to understand another point of view that takes you out of that assertive range, um, it is it is a very open uh, style for communication, and it allows for freedom of speech, it allows for freedom of thought, it allows for freedom of, of emotion. Um, I think I think in this world, if a lot more people were assertive in their communication style, both in sending messages and receiving we'll be a lot better off, a uh, lot less miscommunication. You can't knock out miscommunication because mm -hmm. a lot less. Hello, good afternoon. Good I'm watching this. Can I just um, Hi. put it on means. a Hi. Selma? And I find communication very interesting because we do need to know how to communicate to people, especially in the working environment. Absolutely. As this, um, the young lady just shared and asking if the way how she said it, is it an aggressive, what what type of communication is it? And um, Mr. the young man mentioned that it would have been an aggressive. Maybe as Ms. Chantel said, your body language has a lot to do with I, it. Yeah. Maybe her body language while she was saying it and her tone. Yeah. Because that same statement that she just made, she that could have been put in in an assertive, expressive way, mm -hmm. uh, in a different tone, in a different aggressive, way yes, of bringing yes, it out, line. and it could have been um, assertive as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's the the, the body language that and you put tone. along with it while you're saying it too. Absolutely. It's just my contribution. I am finding it very interesting. Very, because very well said, Ms. Thank you. Very well said. Um, with the public service. And we have a lot of that. A lot of conflict mm -hmm. starts basically because of that communication that Patience. does not get across Absolutely. well. And the funny thing is, thank you so much, Ms. Anselma. Yes, thank for, you very um, much. From ch for chiming in and adding on to, to what we're um, sharing. Um, again, what we're offering or what we're sharing with you guys is a tip of the iceberg when it comes to communication and it definitely goes into depth. Uh, I think a big part of communication is being aware of how you are coming off, your tone, your body language, the words that you're using. Um, yes. I like to say it a lot of times because again, I, I, I assess a lot and I keep myself conditioned a lot, hopefully. And one thing that I have learned is that 
for some reason, culturally, we have a tendency of lacking a filter, <laughs> right? Um, especially if it's not something that you're working on to actively improve. And um, I think it's important for us to be mindful of our filter when we are talking to others because communication is not so much about you being direct and saying what you have to say and get it out there. It's the approach you take in order to make that connection. Because again, if you come at me in a harsh tone, I'm human, a natural block or a defense system is going to go up. So therefore you're taking away from the message being delivered But Marcelli, uh, another another thing to add to that is remember communication is is everything. Like you said, it is the words we choose to use, it is the tone in which we we say it, it is the body language that goes along with it. Because remember, our body language is is our intuition, mm -hmm. all right. And and a part of assertive communication is giving yourself that stop think go module that we normally yeah. use if somebody yeah. comes to you in an aggressive manner you stop yeah. you think about your options and then you respond so that that is a part of being assertive in communication it we are not communicating to to respond in this in the same way that somebody's throwing at us we are responding to give a, a effective feedback all right um, when we're communicating yeah yeah our feedback right. or feedback is key to to possibly how future conversations goes. I mean, if you if you are conscious of yourself, someone comes to you aggressively and you're you're able to understand, hey, well, I don't need to be aggressive back. And my feedback to this aggressive person might fuel mm -hmm. the fire that we don't need going. Okay. Is there, then calm down, let's well you don't necessarily calm down, right? Then let's do this over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So just as a recap We've covered three different types of communication styles. We have the passive communicators. I like to call her passive patty. Passive patty is the type of person to just be very indecisive or um, I don't unclear. know. I don't wanna, yeah, unclear or not necessarily have much input. They kind of just go with wherever mm -hmm. the tide is taking them, right? Use the blue. Uh, wherever, you know, very uncertain. What are you going to have for lunch today? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Okay, then we're going to have sushi. Okay, okay. then. <laughs> you like fish? No. no. But I'll eat it because you guys are having it. That's a passive patty type. I think, I think just... a major part of that is conf compromising their own values. That's yes. a big, ah. that, is the, that is hitting the nail yeah. on the head. Thank yeah. you so much for, for Compromise their own Pa uh, passive individuals compromise their betterment just to keep peace in the camp, so to speak, mm. when it comes to communication, right? Then we have, on the opposite side of the spectrum, we covered what? Aggressive. Aggressive communicators. And I think the word speaks for itself. Regardless of anyone else's needs, they will get theirs. Again, after this <laughs> session, you guys, please not go out there, go start and label, oh, you aggressive, oh, you passive, oh, no. <laughs> That's not what this is about, right? It's just a matter of being able to um, to help me with the word. It's being able being to aware. identify. 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 So, yeah. You, yeah. so you respond. personally can so you know respond, respond and you're protecting yourself and passive, passive party, you come at her aggressive, She'll her feelings will definitely be hurt, right? Because she's focusing on the overbearing uh, demeanor that an aggressor will have. Whereby with a assertive communicator, which falls smack in the middle, middle, you have a touch of passive patty, but you also have a touch of aggression in you to be aggressive. Andy. <laughs> aggressive communicators, again, they are people that will understand you. They will listen to you. They will offer the right information. They'll have that balance necessary. They're not going to withhold because they're stroking your ego or make you feel hype up because an assertive communicator is the type of person. Listen, um, you did a great job today on that. However, I feel like maybe if you try X, Y, Z, it can be a lot better. That is what an aggress a, a assertive communicator assertive. will be like, right? They try to create a mutually progressive environment. Exactly. exactly. For for all of our viewers that are listening in, I'll, I'll share a little bit of trick with you that I like to use, especially when I have to give bad news, right? And this is how an assertive communicator would definitely uh, attack, attack that an assertive communicator would uh, use. We like to call it the sandwich technique. 
Mm -hmm. uh, this is definitely a hang on to for assertive communicators. You don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but you have some information you know it's going to dishearten them. But at the same time, you're connecting that and giving them the option that don't worry, not tomorrow, no, be a rainy day too. You know who uses that? Miss Jenny. I love, it, I love 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 it. Yes, she starts off looking wonderful tonight, but then I think you could have done this, 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 this. And better. then she said, oh, but it was a great performance. And so it's- There you go, <laughs> okay. right? Um, the same thing. And you could use this technique, you guys, with anybody. You can use it in your personal, professional relationships. It's all about the way you approach the situation. Um, for example, um, and just to use a small example, we are looking to launch a training on Monday the outpour of people interested which is super exciting for us it is well over it's well i don't want to even say overwhelming it's just amazing right so unfortunately there are some people that we will have to you know not sign up for this first round so our approach is thank you so much for being interested in our training it really blows our mind and i'm super excited about it Unfortunately, our training has been full to capacity for this one round, but guess what? We are certainly going to be adding you top priority on that list. However, the next session will be scheduled for some time next month. Are you still game? Yes? Okay, let's sign up. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Right. And that is just an example of an assertive communi uh, communicator uh, technique. Right. Remember, assertive communicators, you want to be having that emotional side and keeping in mind the person that you're talking to. But you also want to be the voice of reason and not offer false information or just encourage people by saying, yes, yes, you're the good, you're the good. <laughs> assertive communicators <laughs> will help aid you to improve as opposed to just leave you hanging there. Yes. Right. Right. No, no. I don't need to talk about. All right. So we covered yes. style. Okay. Let's go over to Denise. Wait, so let's move into. Somebody had something to say? Oh. No. No. Okay. It's just feedback. Okay. So let's now go into active listening. But before I get into what active listening actually is, I'll just go over the listening process. And I believe Chantel covered a little bit of this. But listening is actually a process. We might like to think it's something that just comes naturally, but it really isn't. Hearing is something that comes naturally. Hearing is involuntary, but listening is an actual process that your brain goes through, and it's a skill we have to develop. And so listening is far more than just hearing. Listening involves receiving the information, understanding the information, identifying what is being said to you, understanding and interpreting that message, evaluating that message, breaking that message down, remembering it, and then responding. And responding could be whether verbally and uh, non-verbally as well, and observing the non-verbal and verbal aspects of what is being communicated to you. So active listening then is the process of actively taking that responsibility to understand the content and the feeling of what is being said. So it's and clarifying with the speaker to see if what they, um, if, you if you interpreted what the speaker intended to communicate to you, right? So it's not just listening to what they said, it's actually clarifying if what was interpreted was what they really wanted to communicate to you, right? And this is very important because then it one, it shows the speaker that you are concerned and it leads to you getting better information from them. It shows them you're actually interested in what they are telling you and it reduces misunderstandings, right? Because if you're actually going back and clarifying and ensuring, okay, this is what you wanted me to, was it this you wanted me to understand? Was it this you, you were trying to say? You reduce your misunderstanding and then you, it leads to better uh, cooperation and problem solving in the future. So um, active listening has seven key components. The first one is being attentive and listening to what the other person is saying without interrupting them. And I know a lot of people have this problem because we we hear some, we, we're listening to somebody and we are quick to respond, right? We are quick to respond, but um, a key part of active listening is just 
literally just listening and being attentive to what they're saying, their tone, their body language, to everything, right? Um, the second component is asking open-ended questions, like, is this what you meant? Okay, so what you're saying is this. So asking questions and asking probing questions to get more information out of this person, like, oh, tell me more, or how did this make you feel? This, because this helps encourage that person to communicate and feel like you actually want to hear what they have to say. So for example, the other day, uh, my friend sent me a message and the message just said, me and my mom got into an argument. That's it, that was the message. So, and nothing else. No, at first I thought, well, maybe they didn't want to say anything else. But then I realized that they probably just wanted to see if I actually wanted to have that conversation because not everybody will give you all the information up front. Some people might think that you don't want to hear their long story, right? So then no, when I said, oh, what really, what happened? Are you okay? Then they started to share more information because now they realize, okay, she's actually interested in hearing my long story because not everybody will just go, especially the passive parties, they might not just go ahead and tell you the, the yeah. information, right? Long bench. <laughs> exactly. And then there are people who will long bench without, <laughs> without knowing if you want to hear that. And um, also, don't be afraid to request clarification if you need to, right? And a good way to do that is through uh, point number five, which is paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is a very, very good way to clarify because if I say something and you repeat it back to me in your own words, then we have an understanding, okay, that was what you interpreted. No, that was not what I meant, right? So when you paraphrase what the, what the person said, you can come to a better understanding so you can both uh, Communicate okay. effectively. So you can vote, yes. <laughs> yes, thank so, you. So can I, can, I, can, I, can I say something here? Yes. Yes, yes. hi. And, and yes, yes, good afternoon. I've been listening um, more, more, more non-verbally, of course. <laughs> but, but coming back to what you just said, Dene, and that is why, indeed, comprehension is a part of communication. Yes. As a teacher, and Tremet would know this, and as facilitators, you all are. Teachers have a tendency to tell students, tell me the same way I gave it oh, to you. Mm -hmm. Because up. if you not give me the same way I give you, I'm a yeah. failure. Now with me, when I used to teach, I used to tell them, if you give me the same way I gave it to you, I'll fail you because I'm teaching myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it's person. interpretation yeah. and recreation of knowledge. Meaning if you can give it in your own way and add yourself to it, then it means you understand. So what is that saying? <clears throat> what is that saying now to the, those teachers who say, but I never saw I say it. Is that <laughs> real communication? No. If you're seeing a memorizable. But once the essence of the message is there, then that person understood what the, the teacher was, now, was trying second to thing, teach them. Second yeah. thing, we use PowerPoints in our, conver in our communication. PowerPoint is really a distraction if you don't use PowerPoints. We tend to put paragraphs there and then we read off the paragraphs. Yeah. I usually, whenever they used to do presentation for me, I'd say, if you have to read what's up there, you could stop talk. I could read it myself. Because a PowerPoint is supposed to be a point from which you can take off and actually discuss something that you understand. The other part with communication is many times you're trying to communicate things that we ourselves don't understand. And so therefore you need a prop. See, that's not effective communication. Yet when you look at the other person and they look confused as whatever adjective you might want to use, then you say, but why you look like that? You see? Exactly, yeah, precisely. Right, you, you're very right, Edie. So paraphrasing is an essential part of active listening and communication on a whole. And then with that too, observing the person's body language, because body language can make or break the message that you're seeing, and it can change the interpretation of that message. So when you're actively listening, like I was saying, you're not just listening to the words, but you're observing that person's body language. If, if for example, if I say, you've been on the phone all day. 
with that tone of voice and with that um with those <laughs> mannerisms clearly it seems that i'm upset but now if i say you've been on the phone all day with a softer voice and a more relaxed body language maybe i'm just more concerned and wondering if something is wrong why you've been on the phone so my body language changes my message and lastly with active listening you want to summarize the conversation so you can be sure that everybody is on the same page and you can now resolve the issue if there's an issue to be resolved or you can move forward with whatever step that you need to take so um, just to recap with active listening, you want to one, be attentive, ask open-ended questions, ask probing questions, request clarification, paraphrase, be attuned to body language and summarize. Um, but Dene, one of the things I like that you were saying with the active listening, the entire process comes down to also hearing the message that is not being said. Not being said. That is a part of active listening. It right. is using all of this and especially mm. with the nonverbal body language, it is hearing the mm. message in between the message. Right. All right. Because uh, some people may have the tendency to not see exactly what they mean. Mm -hmm. They may not use the words that would appeal to exactly. you. But if you listen actively and you shut off all the other distractions and you're not biased, in, in what you're you're taking in then yes. chances are you can hear the message more clearly even clearly, if it's absolutely. a message they're not seeing exactly precisely and so the last thing i just wanted to touch on before i pass it back to maristelli is something called reflected meaning which focuses on the factual message of the speaker instead of emotional Emotional. communication so it's kind of like what you were saying chantel listening without bias right just focusing on the actual message. And a good question to um, use to employ reflective meaning, meaning when you just want to clarify something is, so what I'm hearing is that when this happens, you feel this way and you want to do this, is that accurate? So that's a good uh, question to ask the person to, to reach that clarification. What, what I'm hearing is, when this happens, you feel this way, and this is what you want to do. Awesome. Thank you, Danae yeah. and team so yeah. far. So the last part of the session, what I'm going to cover with you guys, of course, are barriers. Um, I don't know about you guys, but there are barriers every day that causes miscommunication, whether it's barriers that you might personally have up or something that is physical or within your, your, your control, right? Um, the most common barriers that we are familiar with or we're finding that there are instances, there are issues are physical, system, emotional, attitudinal, or, um, and or gender-based, right? Uh, let's break it down a little bit. What is what is physical barrier? What are some examples of maybe physical barriers within the work environment? What would be an idea of physical barrier? Thought? You can't see. You can't see? Things oh. I can see? <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Not having internet or <laughs> not okay, no, that would probably Distance? fall more under system That's system system. Yes, it would, it would, it would, but Physical barrier literally is, for example, think of it like you're working in a work environment, an organization, uh -huh. a large organization, or not even large. It could be a small, small little um, setting. If you, if, no working area is a one-man island, right? You are working as a, as a part of a team. Perfect example, here at Bell Trade, we have a total of four different units, right? Four units at, perhaps we have two units at different locations, and then we have two here uh, within Belize City. Now, it's only natural and it's only normal that you will gravitate or have a closer understanding, relationship, and communication with the immediate persons that you are working around, whereby where the physical barrier comes is because other teammates are placed at different units. Now that's not gonna. That's not saying that you won't have a good relationship with them, but it's just understanding that that respect is there, that mutual understanding that we're a cohesive team, whereby it's just simply understanding that we are separated, not intentionally, but that's just the dynamics of the work environment. Um, I've worked in businesses before where you are working as opposed to units in the different departments, right? 
you hear the different departments going off and doing little celebrations or little eatings on their own. And again, it's absolutely natural because that's a part of building healthy relationships that should actually make you feel good that you are building some type of bond or uh, communication with individuals. Next up, we have our system barriers. What are some instances of system barriers? Uh, not a clear understanding of perhaps chain of commands. Uh, perhaps if you, are, if you are working from home and all of this is new to you, you have certain um, uncertainties hindering over your head, meaning more questions than answers. Uh, that is a huge barrier as opposed to helping you uh, do better in your work, right? Um, Emotional barriers, I believe Tremet and I touched on this before when we were yeah. talking about the two different types of communication styles or the three different styles. And you speak, you, you communicate how you feel. Right, might be right. A problem, whatever you have in your in, in the past life, trauma, with whatever. Mm -hmm. Emotional barriers, we fit, we're we faced with these daily. I think we have a tendency now in this new um, this new generation, uh, we, we I've never heard the word introvert used so much. Uh, a lot of people are self-claimed introverts, or I guess it's just an easier way for the, um, to explain that you're not so comfortable communicating with others, right? Um, so therefore, that was definitely going to be dependent on the barrier that you put up. And again, when it comes to emotional um, barriers, that is something that I, I, as I mentioned when Tremet was sharing, it's something, unfortunately, that was instilled with us from growing up. Um, to a certain extent, I believe that I, I was, uh, I was uh, a passive party at one time until I started conditioning myself and finding that I don't like what passive parties feel like. Um, so I started to open up and try to feel a little bit more confident in myself to be a bit more assertive. Um, and again, that goes, if I assess myself and I track back, I, process, could, process. Yes, I could clearly remember my mom and dad say, uh, 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 when adults are talking, you don't, you don't, you don't chime in that big people, big folks talks, right? Yeah. As opposed to, um, you know, and I, I like to encourage viewers or anyone that's listening in, start practicing these little tips and tricks from, from home, right? Because you will be the production or you will aid to producing better communicators in the longer run. Um, as a result of having poor emotional, um, oh, sorry, as opposed to having emotional barriers, this is essential why, just as we're uh, discussing, it leads to a long-term uh, discomfort when you are having to communicate now, you know, in your work environment or even with people on a whole, right? Uh, this uh, happens to be the, uh, the chief barrier as to why people struggle with having poor communication it's because they're not confident within their own selves or they have that uh stigma that uh speak when you're spoken to you ever heard that before definitely but i think marcella it's a double-edged sword Very because much. you have some people who may not be comfortable expressing themselves but you also have people on the opposite spectrum mm -hmm. the emotional barrier would be that they can't relate necessarily to other people very that nice. emotionally Absolutely. they're not they're not as developed um socially so i i think when it comes to emotional barriers it's it's kind of a, a double-edged sword there great uh another a barrier that i want to cover real quick is attitudinal barriers have you ever heard about Ooh. attitudinal barriers Never. <laughs> i don't know what you talk about <laughs> i'm a hand on my neck just <laughs> <laughs> Attitudinal barriers is definitely more evident within the work environment. Why? It's only natural. You're managing, you're working with so many different personality styles, right? And I love using the term to each his own. Um, it's just a matter of you, again, adjusting yourself uh, in how to communicate or relate to individuals as you're monitoring their styles. Um, now, the key to overcoming barriers, and it's going right back full circle mm -hmm. to where we start, where we're started, is just being mindful of that whole 55% that counts for what? Body language, right? Um, also, I want you guys to be aware of, and I'm going to touch base on it because Chantel mentioned it earlier, the whole paralinguistics. Again, that is the way in which you say words with your volume, your pitch, the rate of speech, because again, it's a make or break. We're humans and we relate to individuals. Uh, we, it's a mirroring factor. We have a tendency of mirroring people 
again, we don't mean it, but it's just the dynamics of being human, right? So in turn, if I come to you and I talk to you really fast and I say, oh, hi, good afternoon. Thank you so much for calling VTech. How are you doing today? Right? I'm giving off the impression just from my voice alone that I'm rushing you. I don't have time for you. So hurry up. Whereby if I say pleasant, good morning. Thank you so much for calling VTech, a unit of Bell Trade. How are you doing today? Right? My audience initially will have that same feedback or that same um, uh, communication style. We have a tendency, just like I mentioned just a few minutes ago, we mirror individuals in order to find that comfort when you are communicating. So it's very important to be aware of your paralinguistics as well. Okay. Um, one thing I want to leave with you guys, I love to uh, share quotes. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, if you have any questions or queries to share with us, please feel free to chat or as Miss Anselma did, she joined right in and I love that. Um, I want you to leave, I want to leave you with this. People may hear your words, but they absolutely feel your attitude, right? Again, it's a full package. You have to be mindful first of yourself and then how you are coming off as uh, you're communicating with individuals. Okay. Um, are there any questions? Any comments? Any <laughs> queries? Any agreements? Disagreements? Questions, any? Queries. <laughs> Hi guys, I love it. I really, I really did enjoy. Hi. I really did enjoy and the, every single section that you went through. It is very relevant that we are experiencing when it comes to the world of communication, and I think more like this would help, especially in the public service, because we have that communicating problem in the public service. And um, for me, I try when we are in a little group within my workplace for try to use the assertive, especially with my coworkers, them in our little workspace and so forth. So I really enjoy it. And if you have any more session, I would be interested to attend as well. Thanks Thank a lot. You so Thank much, you so much, Ms. Anselma. Ms. said it right. Yeah. Ms. Anselma and said it right. Yeah, and then um, I believe Mar mentioned it earlier, we will be uh, dropping a couple more videos next mm -hmm. week based on time and personal management. Mm -hmm. um, so, In a little bit of what Ms., um, in regards to what Ms. Anselma says, um, she is right in respects that we want to put off more of these meetings, these, these conference, these little things here, because it's important that we try to lead people to the water. However, the bottom line is that the people have to want to drink the water. Um, we can do our part as best as we can, and I'm sure we will continue to try to help provide an opportunity, try to build people's minds through whatever medium we can. Right, uh, right. But the end of the day, we need you, the viewers, the people listening, the people participating, to be your agent of change. You have to be the one responsible to take it upon yourself to say yes. I want to improve myself and I will try some of these Guys, things. we have a question. Oh, yes. Um, from Ludemir, he says, how do you transfer these skills at work whereby you have an aggressive supervisor or boss who does not have the right skill set to be in that position? And uh, I guess, therefore, they see you as a threat. So uh, this is uh, dealing with an aggressive, probably mm -hmm. insecure personality. Mm -hmm. uh. But I, I think it coincides with what you said, um, Tremet and Ludimer, we, we pretty much say the same thing. Um, you, you have to be able to identify your personality. Yeah. Um, and therefore, it's a matter of them being able to identify your personality and they have to personally work towards being more assertive. Mm -hmm. So they have to be open to change. A big part of communication is being open to identifying mm -hmm. your communication style and it's you working at it and that mm -hmm. that is that is key not everybody will be a great communicator and it, it takes time and it takes investment and if you're not willing to invest into changing the way and the patterns that you communicate in and for somebody in a supervisory position it's essential it's key because you're working with people from, from many different aspects absolutely I understand what he's really getting at too, you know, and that he, 
we will tell you this and we tell many people in our in our other sessions you are in charge of you you are not in charge of anyone else um your response is completely up to you your if you say your boss is aggressive that doesn't mean you have to respond in like manner that is his or her way whatever way that is them you're responsible for your behavior their actions is a reflection of them but that doesn't mean it has to be a reflection of you to match it right you right. you behave in a manner that is it's a, that is professional that is that is commendable to your person mm -hmm. and, and, and if they see it they see if they don't they don't that's on them but you know that you have conducted yourself in a proper professional uh, a manner right and make all your communications as clear as possible and uh, be if you are assertive be mindful of your tone of voice okay absolutely and um just to wrap up you guys i want to ensure and um and make note right um it's uh chantal said it tremet said it and i think the team pretty much you know we're all on the same board communication skills is a everyday work in process <laughs> We walk and we meet and we interact with many different styles, many different personality types. It's just a matter of you being secure in yourself and enabling yourself to be open to listening, uh, doing the whole stop, stop. What was that you were mentioning, Chantel? Stop, oh, you're stop, 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 think, go. No, stop, think, go. Stop, think, go. Stop, think, go. <laughs> Stop, think, and go happens right. within seconds, all right? All of this information we're sharing with you, it might sound long and drawn out, but all of this happens within seconds. <laughs> so stop thinking, go. It happens within seconds. Oh, you're coming at me with an attitude. How should I react? Not fight fire with fire, but there is always a, a, a mindset. A pause. A There's problem. always a yeah. pause. Uh, it's always a, a pause problem. before you react. Exactly. Um, please feel free to reach out to us uh, at BTEC if you have any questions or queries you may not have felt comfortable sharing um, in the chat. You can call us at 223-0322. Um, that is for our unit um, number. Um, if you have any questions, like I mentioned, that you'd like us to go in depth, we can surely share that with you. Um, the information that is shared here is just tidbits of what communication skills starts at, and we're more than open to sharing. But thank you so much for giving us your time, and Ms. Anselma and Mr. Lumier, thank you for actually, you know, participating and asking questions. Edie. The value, Edie, yeah, and good. everyone else that is supporting. Thank you so much for being a part of our session. Uh oh, after do it. BTEC is a unit of a bell trade. <laughs> <laughs> Have a wonderful evening. Have a safe weekend, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.